Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The feast of Passover was near when Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him. He said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are, th are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people reclined. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, Jesus said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, good morning and uh, welcome to Mass today. All of you who are here in person, and also those who uh, follow the Mass online at home. This Sunday and uh, the next few Sundays, we have the opportunity to uh, hear from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 6. And uh, we know that uh, John 6 is really about Jesus being the bread that came down from heaven. John 6 is famous for that teaching on uh, the bread of life. And so as we reflect on these readings, as uh, Catholics, once again, we uh, call to mind the importance of uh, our belief in the real presence of uh, Jesus in the sacrament of his body and blood but uh, in today's uh, reading, something else also catches my attention, and that's uh, the Apostle Andrew. Andrew is a, a very intriguing character in the Gospel of John. He appears three times, and each time that he appears, it is always Andrew who brings someone someone to Jesus and then he would disappear at the beginning of the gospel of John we know that Andrew 
was the first disciple called by Jesus. And it was Andrew who brought his brother Peter to Jesus. In today's Gospel reading, as we hear about the story of the miracle of uh, the feeding of the 5,000, once again, it was Andrew who found a young boy with uh, five loaves and two fish. And again, it was Andrew who introduced the boy to Jesus for that miracle. Later, in the Gospel of John, Andrew appears the third time. This time, it was Andrew who introduced some Greeks to Jesus. And uh, the funny thing about Andrew was that uh, he introduced people to Christ and then we don't hear about him anymore. As we reflect on the person of Andrew, I think uh, he best exemplifies what it means to be a saint. A saint is not really about himself, but a saint only brings people to God and does not get all the attention and spotlight Throughout the four Gospels, many times we can see that uh, the three apostles, Peter, James, and John, form some kind of inner circle with uh, Jesus. For example, when Jesus was uh, transfigured on the mountain, he took Peter, James, and John with him. Or in the Garden of Gethsemane before he died. Again, Peter, James, and John were mentioned. Andrew was not one of them, and yet he showed no resentment. Through, throughout the Gospels, we can see that it was Peter who got most of the attention, the spotlight, not Andrew. Again, there was no sign of resentment on the part of Andrew. A famous author once said that, uh, well, he, he makes a distinction between a hero and a saint. He said that uh, a hero is the main character of his own story, but a saint is only a minor character in the story of God. According to that definition, Andrew was a saint and not a hero. I guess that for many of us, we all want to be the hero. We want to be famous. We want to get all the attention. We all want to make ourselves the main characters of our own stories. But that's not really the point. To be a Christian is to be another Andrew. To be a Christian is to bring other people to God, and then we can let God take care of the rest. You know, to be a saint is, a, I guess, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's a difficult thing, and yet, at the same time, to be a saint is uh, fundamentally to make God the main character of his own story and to make ourselves minor characters. So in, in that sense, it may not be difficult to be a saint. Some people think that uh, to be a saint, you need to have some kind of um, mystical vision or experience. Now, I, I don't know if uh, you have had one of those. I never had any mystical experience, not yet. Some people think that uh, to be a saint, you have to suffer greatly. 
you have to suffer like the holy martyrs who died for their faith. I mean, there's a, a lot of truth to that. But uh, in my life, I don't look forward to any more suffering. I think I suffer enough already. I have to live with uh, Father Steve and Monsignor Will and Father Thomas. I have to see them every day. Now, please don't tell them I say that, but, uh, but it's true. I mean, so, you know, to be a saint is uh, to realize that this life, this ministry is not really about me, but uh, it is always about God. And uh, I am just a minor character in the story that is fundamentally about the Lord. Within the past year, we know that there have been a lot of divisions within the country because of the election, because of uh, the question of race, because of COVID. And uh, I remember last October and November, as we came to the peak of the election season, there were a few Catholic priests and bishops who went on the internet publicly endorsing or condemning a certain candidate or party. And, uh, and those public figures had a huge following from the Catholic faithful. See, in my estimation, those guys are not doing the work of God, but rather they are drawing attention to themselves. They want to make a name for themselves, and that's exactly what Andrew is not about. Those guys just want to push their own propaganda and agenda. And uh, as a, a Catholic church, we don't accept that. I say again and again that the church does not condemn or endorse any particular candidate or, or party. So for a priest or a, a bishop to make those public statements, it's wrong. I believe that those guys just want to get the spotlight, and, uh, and that's, not, that's not our vocation. We are called to be like Andrew, to bring people to God quietly and clandestinely, and then let God take care of the rest. Because as Catholics, we believe that everything came from God, and ultimately, everything will be rendered back unto God. We are not the main characters, but rather, we are just minor characters in the story that is ultimately about God.